the armor of God, part seven, sword of the spirit. Can a soldier fight with any of his weapons unless he's first trained by his officer? Therefore, it's so very important for every person who desires to become a disciple and student of the Lord to plunge oneself into the depths of Christ, who himself is the Word of God. I love to saturate my mind and heart by fellowshipping with him through his Word, especially in listening to entire books and chapters of my audio Bible, and there's always new things and deeper revelations to discover as God loves to unveil himself to those who become intimate with him. The Holy Spirit, when he appeared before me in open vision in 2009, gave me the keys to receive revelation from him, the keys of the kingdom, which is sacrifice. Because as we sacrifice the distraction and unimportant things of this world, God will draw close as the ultimate treasure and he will make himself known unto you. I choose to do what David says in Psalm 1 verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate to work of them, but turn aside, it shall not leave to me. I find I found my joy in the word Christ Jesus, and as with Mary, my favorite place is to spend much time at his feet and to drink from his lips. For as God pours himself into me, I in turn can pour him into the hearts which he has prepared to listen. How can we expect the sword of the Spirit? to circumcise and cut away from our hearts and minds the corruption and ungodliness of a sinful world unless we allow His Word to saturate our hearts. It is written in James 3 that no man can tame the tongue, but God can. And the way that God does that is He captures and captivates our hearts. Then he transforms it by his truth until we learn to speak out of the balance of a renewed heart. Like David says, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Did our chief in command not declare the following in Luke 6, 45, that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil, for out of the balance of heart the mouth speaks. Psalm fifty twenty three. Whoever offers praises glorifies me, and to him that orders his conversation aright I will show the salvation of God. Psalm 19, verse 8, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. If you consider it, how God speaks to us through the heart of his word in the middle of the Bible, through David, who was a man after God's own heart, and it's within the heart of the Bible that you find the longest chapter devoted to the importance of giving heed to and treasuring the words and the commandments and the precepts and the ordinances and the statutes of God our Father Yahweh. A few verses from Manitin, Psalm 110, Blessed are the upright in the way who walks in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is that which proceeds from the mouth of God. What God speaks is righteousness when he gives us instruction. Blessed are they who keep his testimonies and who seek him with all their heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways, which means 
they live a repented lifestyle because a sin, a transgression, and iniquity is not the same. Iniquity is unrepented sin. So we have to live daily sensitive to the Holy Spirit to keep our hearts and minds pure before God and to learn to live according to His standard of righteousness. And sta righteousness is what God says. So iniquity is unrepented sin. Sin that begins in the heart, a transgression as we act it out, and if we don't repent that the blood can destroy it, it becomes iniquity. You have commanded us to keep your commandments carefully, O Lord, O that my eyes were fixed to keep your statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I have respect to your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not forsake me completely. With what shall a man, young man, cleanse his way by taking it according to your word? With all my heart have I sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The sword of the Spirit is a weapon. And it's imperative that, if, that every child of God saturates themselves by spending much time in the Word of God. Like it is, says in Romans 12, verse 1, Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but to transform by the renewing of your mind. We have to be renewed in our thought life. to live in agreement with God. Jesus said in John 8, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And his word, his sword is our defense. Like it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, casting down everything, every thought and every argument which exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Because by spending time in the Word, it's like growing the blade and the size of your sword, of your weapon, of your arsenal. So in every occasion, and as we sometimes experience various attacks, the Holy Spirit will quicken to us verses that we have memorized to counter-attack through the spoken word, which becomes a living sword, by which the enemy is resisted and fought and defeated. The Spirit of the Lord, of the sword of the Spirit, is not used to cut each other to pieces, nor is it used to intimidate or manipulate, for Jesus Christ is not a legalistic butcher that cuts to kill us, but is a loving, merciful, gentle surgeon that cuts to heal us. He sought cuts away and removes deception in our hearts and minds. There are many today that abuse the Word of God to their own destruction. The Word of God is a sword and can destroy people if used wrongly. We are commanded in 2 Timothy 2, 15, to study to show self approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divining the Word of Truth. It's important to walk humbly when handling the Word of God, and every child of God should Always remember the admonishment in James 3. My brethren, be not many teachers, but knowing that we shall receive the severer and stricter judgment. 2 Corinthians 4, Therefore seeing we have this, mercy, this ministry, 
as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God for profit or deceitfully, but by manifesting the, the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Lord.